Hey guys, this is Rob Jam Webb here for Wax for This Music Tutorials, and what I want to show you today is something completely different and away from Ableton. Now, as you know, I usually do nothing but Ableton tutorials, but before I used Ableton a long, long time ago, um, I used to use a piece of software called Cakewalk. Now, I had this back in the late 1990s when I first got my first Windows PC, um, and I used it religiously all the way up until around 2010 when I discovered that Ableton had a lot more flexibility. Um, but prior to that, Cakewalk was my number one choice in software. Um, they were a leading software at the time. They were, you know, quite rival to uh, Cubase, so to speak. But obviously now we get a lot more choice in software, so I moved on to Ableton and stuck with it ever since. But I've just found out that um, last year, um, unbeknown to me, because I've not paid any attention to the, the company, they've now reissued the uh, software entirely free. So you're getting a complete door, the whole package, for free. And all you have to do is just register with BandLab, who are the now the owners of it. Um, because prior to that it was Roland. I'm not sure if they're still uh, linked somehow. But um, you get the whole package. You get all the plugins with it. You get all of the effects and the third-party synths that, that, that come with it. I say third-party, but you know the built-in uh, presets that come with it. Um, there's some brilliant stuff in there. It's a really solid door. Um, and as I say, I've recently just rediscovered it, so I thought I'd download it for nostalgia reasons. Um, and obviously they've got a, an updated version of it. The um, version that's on there is pretty similar to the one I used to use, but obviously they've updated it uh, throughout the years. Um, I finished using it on Cakewalk Sonar Producer Edition 3, I think it was. Um, and I used to integrate Reason into that as well, one of the early versions of Reason. Um, and you can rewire Ableton into it anyway. And add all of your third-party plugins that you, you know you'd want you download for free, or the ones that you pay for from Arteria or or Roland or Korg or wherever. So it, it it does everything. It does absolutely everything you need it to do. Um, it's got you know wave editors on it, and it's got all of your MIDI uh, needs and all your all the capabilities of mixing down. It's got some great um, mixing down um, facilities on there, and each channel is already got a, a pre-programmed um, retro-looking mixing desk on each panel. Um, so you've got compressor and EQ and, and various stuff like that. So it's got the whole package, um, and it's just absolutely free. And when I re-downloaded it the other day, um, it made me realise just how good it actually was. I've had a little play with it, and I put together a little lo-fi house tutorial um, just for the purposes of this video, just to show people who are maybe an avid Pro Tools user or Ableton or Logic user, Cubase. Um, I'm just trying to encourage you to try it for, for different, uh, just to get a different text, you know, different, a different texture of using software um, and a different sort of sound really um, I would recommend downloading it because it doesn't cost you anything um, and basically having a go on it because there's no wrong with using you know another door there's nothing wrong with having another string to your bow so uh, I highly recommend it and it's worth having a play with even if you end up not using it you know it's still worth to you know challenge yourself and uh, break away from the usual mold that you probably find yourself in because I myself, after nine or ten years of Ableton, it, you know, it's so automatic. Sometimes it can be really boring. So downloading Sonar again, well, Cakewalk, as it's still just called now, um, I found that it was a bit of a challenge, and it was. I thought I wanted to do this, and I dug my heels in, and I just quickly got the basics uh, back uh, under my feet. So I've done a video, um, and all you have to do is just check the link at the bottom um, of the description. Uh, and you can go and download it yourself. As I say, it's a solid piece of kit, and it's really worth having, even just as a backup. You know, if you, if your your door, you know, you become bored of of the door that you're using, and you want something fresh, uh, it's good to to have that uh, extra piece of equipment. So um, go and download it, and check out the video here that I do. It's just a little brief uh, lo-fi house thing, nothing major, just a heavy 808 kick, a few pads, and some uh, hi hats and stuff, and a bass line. So uh, thanks for watching, subscribe to this channel and any questions just email me and I respond within 24 hours. Hopefully I'll be doing a few more Cakewalk tutorials over the next few weeks. So any questions you may have or any tutorial ideas that you want me to put together then let me know and I will try and accommodate them. Thank you and watch the tutorial. Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to do a little tutorial on how to use Cakewalk um, and just make a little basic lo-fi house track, uh, a quick brief demo, a 16 bar loop so to speak, um, just to get the basics out there and just to show you exactly what it is I have to do uh, in order to create a little track. Um, as I said in the introduction, um, it's good to you know use a different piece of software as opposed to continuously using the same old thing. 
so basically when you install cakewalk and you've got it loaded into the computer just click on basic you can have the four track set in the 16 track set in a completely blank project or one specifically for guitars and vocals which i've not used yet but um we're just going to use the basic one for now and when we load that up it goes through all of your plugins and your files and stuff and it sets you up a basic template with an audio and a midi channel uh, attached like so i'm just going to collapse that for now because we don't need that and we've got in here as i say the audio and the midi um and then we're going to work from there and the, basically the interface for this is is there's a lot of stuff on here um i mean if you look at uh, ableton's interface it's very blank very plain until you start adding stuff to all the uh, panels and stuff but with this it's all thrown in you know quite um, quickly you've got your console down here look you know your mixing desk um, and then on each of the channels so for example let's go to the audio channel uh, you've got your, your panels here where you can add your effects like in here you've got your built-in plugins like all these yeah which are really good um, but then you've got them and you've got your sends if you want to do some bus returns and stuff where you you know sidechain and things like that uh, but we'll get to that another time and then you've got three options here, which is clip track and, and pro ch pro channel, which is um, that's just all your information. And that's where you can uh, mess about with the audio. And then you've got your track, all the information in there about uh, stretching it and the different methods you can use for time stretching audio and, and stuff. And then you've got your pro channel here, which is individual for each channel. You've got your compressor and your EQ and you've got a tube amp thing here and you've got your faders, your, your drive and stuff. So it's it's really good because it's got you know all of these for one thing so if we was to put a kick drum on that which we'll do in a minute we can you know uh, it's already all set for you you don't have to add uh, an eq to each channel it's already built in so with ableton for example you put on a kick on channel one uh you have to install you know you have to add your own eq and stuff which is not a problem but you know and here it's just already plugged in which is great and it's got that old console look as well which is uh you know also very appealing so what we're going to do is, um, and then over here, before I go any further, you've got all your soft synths. So wherever you put your DLL files for your VSTs, uh, they'll all come up on here. Um, they're the built-in ones, as I mentioned in the uh, in tutorial intro. So you've got all these built in, and then you've got the ones that are, you know, your own. And that's pre pretty much the ones that I use. So you've got Tyrell, the Uno, the VStation, and all these are the Roland um, cloud subscription package. Um, and then up here we've got the section for rewire where you can put in uh, you can connect Ableton to this or you can connect reason to this so it's pretty got it's got the whole th the whole package it really is a solid piece of kit um, so you've got all your things here for editing uh, you've got your loops and all your different you know stuff like that here that you want to time write stuff in and you make notes and stuff so yeah so let's get on with it and I'm gonna go to audio to go to file then import audio and we want to uh, start off by adding a kick drum. So what we do is we uh, find some drums and I'm going to find some 808s um, for this purpose. I'm gonna, I click on my 808s and I'm going to find a, uh, a bottom heavy sort of kick, uh, which will be this one probably. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going to put that in there and there you go. It's there like so. So in order to edit it, what we want to do is um, open it up. And just make sure that it's in the right place let's just close it down slightly and we want to make four of these so we're going to go over like this but first of all what you want to do is if you're going to do that you need to um edit the clip like that because if you do that and then you copy that over it's going to play underneath each one you see and we don't want that so what we want to do is we want to just trim it right down like that so that it plays only that part of the clip of the sample and like so like that so I'm still too far out here because I've not done this for in such a long time I'm gonna shorten this again like so and then we're gonna go one two three and four let's rewind a bit and there you go uh, and then we're gonna select those four and we're gonna copy those over so you just hold your left mouse button down and press control on your keys and do it again and then I'm gonna do it again so that we've got as many as we need for this section so and then what we're gonna do is we want to loop this so what we do is we select them all and then here in the drop down we click on loop and press this and now we've got the uh, the bar here so you grab one end loop it there and loop it there and now we have the kick and it's looped and it's a nice subby kick so what we're gonna do
do is we're going to add a compressor to that. We're going to turn the compressor on. So remember, in our channels over here, we've now got that kick coming through there. So we choose the Pro Channel, turn on the compressor, like so. And we're going to turn the input up. It's quite a subby kick. And what we could do is, I mean, I've got headphones on, so it's difficult to difficult to gauge what sort of level I want. I'm just going to turn my master up on my headphones. And now what we're going to do, it's a bit clicky, I don't know why it's clicky. We're going to turn on the EQ and click this button here and that opens up the panel of the graphic. And we want it nice and subby. Okay, so we've got a little kick in there that'll do for the purposes of this. I mean, as I say, I've not used this software in a long time. I only downloaded it last night um, and I've had a bit of a play with it today. Um, so I'm still getting used to it. Um, so bear with me if things don't go according to plan. So that's that one done. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put in uh, some sort of atmospheric um, pad. So we're going to use the built-in sounds that, that come with, with Cakewalk. Um, now, if you listen to a lot of the lo-fi stuff... Um, the moodier stuff as opposed to the more funkier stuff they use a lot of general midi sort of sounds they use a lot of sounds that are uh, you know early 90s late 80s sort of keyboard sounds um the, the, some of the tracks that i found so what you do is to create that sound we're going to use an old uh, standard midi sound called soundtrack um and this was very popular in the 80s on things like the d50 um the roland d50 and stuff like that um, and we're going to go to soft synth, so insert soft synth, and we're going to go to general MIDI and open the Cakewalk TTS-1. And when it comes up with this screen here, you should just leave everything as it is, click OK. And it'll open up two channels um, for us. And if we give it a second, there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select this little section here, this little keyboard icon. Click on that once. And then over here, you click on the first one. We're going to open this channel, so you click that. Um, and in there, you've got piano. And you click on the piano right in, click preset, and across here, you've got all your different pianos, all your different, you know, glockenspiels and vibes, and then your organs and guitars, bass, so on and so on. All general MIDI sounds, all the stuff you'd get on a cheap and nasty keyboard, they're all on here. So we go to synth effects, and we get the soundtrack sound up there, like so, okay? And in there now, we're going to have this sound. You'll recognise it if you like this sort of lo-fi house stuff that I like. So it's like this. So very simple chords. Um, and I'm going to record those in. So I'm going to rewind my little um, cursor and press record. And automatically the metronome comes on. go okay so i've recorded those in and uh, a little bit glitchy because i've not sorted the latency out so i'll sort that out in another time and i'm just going to sort these out now uh you need to select this one here um and then we're going to zoom in using the cursor zoom out like you would on any other door and then we're going to highlight them all so just select over with your left mouse button until they turn white process go to quantize and it should be on 116 which is standard um, but obviously some of them are not over, so I'm just going to make sure that they... Let's just get these in straight in lines. So I'm just going to quickly whip these in. It's a very simple chord. Um, it's just F major, A minor, E minor, and back to F major again. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because of the... Of the um, because of the attack being quite slow on, on these notes, I'm going to pull them over slightly uh, just so it gives it a, a bit more of an edge uh, when it rolls over. that 
so just click X down the bottom there. So we've got that in there, and now what we want to do is whack in a quick uh, hi hat. So I'm going to go insert audio track, and then I'm going to go back to uh, import audio, repeat the process. Uh, I'm going to go back into my files, and I'm going to find a 909 hi hat, which is there open. Let's have a look down here. Get in place. There we go. So what I want to do with this, because it's low fi I want to make it. Uh, I want to make the hi hat a little bit, you know, low down uh, in the transposition. So I'm going to go to process and transpose, and I'm going to transpose it minus two, um, minus three. I'm going to take it down, and let's see what happens to that. That's better. And we'll put on a uh, a reverb as well in a minute. So copy that over like this. I'll uh, just copy these over. Get them right. There we go. Um, copy them over again. And again. And let's just move across and then again as usual. So we've got like a, a nice little lo-fi sort of vibe going there. So what I want to do is on the reverb, I want to go to my track and I want to make sure the clip is selected. And we're going to go to the effects here and click the plus sign. And we're going to add the Breverb, which is the built-in cakewalk one, which has got some really nice stuff on it. Um, and we're just going to turn down the dampening. And let's just turn the pre-delay up. Just reverse it slightly. And then we'll open up the panel. So go to views and console view, and we'll turn the volume down slightly. So we've got that in there, and we've got a little bass line. We're going to get a little bass line now. So we're going to go to some more MIDI. Uh, obviously, you can hide hats on that, um, and just try kick on that. And now we're going to just whack a quick bass line. So go to soft synth again, insert. And I'm going to use the OXE FM synth, which is one of my favorite synths. And uh, I'm going to come up with a bass line on here. And let's just get a bass. And I want the square bass. I think it's called square. There it is. Oh. And it's just a very simple sort of square bass. Um, and it's just very, you know, it might not even work for this. Let's try it. it down and we can have a sub bass but I'm just gonna put that in just for the sake of it. So I'm gonna press record and here we go. And there we are that's that little bit done. Double click on it and and we have the notes and they all need to be quantized so process quantize a sixteenth. And we should be in time, I hope. That one just needs to be over a bit. Just grab that one. Grab the move button. Sorry. Move it over. Pull that over. They're out of sync. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of them. And then I'm going to copy them put them over onto uh, onto the A and then I'm going to do the same for the um, the other ones rather than just edit them quickly it's just easier to <coughs> copy and paste those so just grab that down to the E the E and then back to the F I think that's the F isn't it there we go there and there we go that's that little bit done don't forget i've not done this in a long time in over 10 years so i'm a little bit rusty when it comes to using cakewalk so what i'll do is probably just quickly show you uh click insert audio track 
and then again import audio and then we'll go back into my samples and we'll just find a drum loop um, that I can find uh, what, 120 so let's just get one of these in there um, let's have a look and I'm just going to take the bottom end off because this will be a full uh, drum loop and we don't want a full drum loop so let's just get that on the line um, and then grab your selection tool there we go and it just copies co copies over you know it drags and drags until you decide where you want it to stop um, you know playing <laughs> So if I was to want to take the bottom end of that out, I'd open this up, turn it on, and just, you know, I just want to be able to take that down. So let's just flatten that completely, like so. Um, and there we are. And then we can move that in like that and just try that. Alright, put the kick on. Yeah, it'll do. Let's just double click on it and you click on this here like this, look. And there we go. And then you can chop it out, you can chop bits out, you can, you know, right click on it, insert effect, and you can put a little bit of delay in that bit, or you can reverse it, or whatever it is you want to do. Um, but we'll go into that more in depth at another time. But the basic gist of it is this, you know. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Um, uh, any questions, just email me and I respond within 24 hours. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and keep your eyes out for more cakewalk tutorials, more Ableton tutorials, more reviews, etc. etc. Thank you for watching and I hope that you've downloaded Cakewalk and you're having a go with it and experimenting with it. Thank you and goodbye.